a warm welcome this is control systems course focusing on lecture 2.1 representing time response and time domain specifications time response is normally response is nothing but the output of a closed system and time response is the output of the closed system which will be represented as a function of time it describes the behavior of a system and it contains much amount of information which is varying with respect to time specifications so normally time response can be uh, classified as two different responses namely transient response as well as steady state response while considering the transient response the response will be purely varying with respect to time <coughs> when it is time uh, normally it will be a short time representation and this transient period will be the behavior of the system and it will be tending to arrive uh, towards a steady state value and the steady state response is that part of the response where the transient state will be completely died out the position of the system will be completely at steady state and at this stage when it is compared with the reference position or the desired value it gives an indication of the final accuracy of the system and next uh, the time domain specifications or the parameters uh, which will be representing the functions or the system's value at each individual particular timings so in general case we have uh, divided the time response uh, that is the transient state as well as the steady state uh, response state uh, into five different timings namely delay time rise time peak time settling time and then we have the maximum peak overshoot value here it is delay time td td is nothing but the 50 percentage of the rise in i mean the first rise in the signal value the first rise has to be considered in this case and here it will be the 50 percentage of the desired value here we have the set point as 1 the timing which is been taken to achieve this 50 percentage of the rise in the or the signal value for the very first time will be considered as delay time next while considering the rise time it is the time taken for the signal to reach the desired value that is 100 percentage of the desired set value for the very first time because we can see the graph is a graph has reached to one value here and also after rising it has been reduced getting reduced to the actual state again at this point so we have to consider only the first time arrival of that value and this is called rise time the peak time is nothing but the time taken by the signal to reach the maximum peak value or the highest value which it can reach this will be the peak value and finally it is a settling time the time at which uh, the signal will be entering into a analogable tolerance value that may be 2 percentage or 5 percentage of the desired set value uh, because of the signal never the signal will settle down to the accurate value uh, within a short period of time or within prescribed time it may take some time uh, so we have we are not supposed to allow all the systems to get settled at that particular reach alone we will be considering few relaxations or tolerance value and that is 2 percentage or 5 percentage and here we can consider the mp value mp is nothing but the maximum peak overshoot value overshoot is nothing but how much the signal has exceeded from the set value here it is 1 and here we have a maximum value at tp that is the peak time what is the maximum value reached so the overshooted value is nothing but the value above the set value so this is considered as mp in this equation when we substitute c of t is equal to 1 we have one at the left hand side as well as one at the right so on the calculation both the terms will be getting cancelled and we'll have this term equal to zero now we can see there is an exponential term as well as a sine term here the exponential term is not equal to sine term because the signal is at a rising condition so probably we have the sine term to be zero here so what we are going to consider is exponential term is not equal to zero but the sine term is equal to zero 
while considering the sign term is equal to 0 also we can consider the angles when and all the sign term will be equal to 0 it may be 0 or pi or 2 pi and all the intervals of 180 degrees or pi terms the sign parameter will be equal to 0 so let us consider this value omega n into root of 1 minus eta square into t plus 5 actually this is the angle let us assume this angle to be equal to pi pi is a base value so we have taken pi from this if you are calculating tr we will get pi minus 5 divided by omega n into root of 1 minus eta square and we know the value for pi as tan inverse of root of 1 minus eta square divided by theta. in this way we can calculate rise during the dc of t by dt value on uh, what uh, on differentiating you will get these two terms so when substituting this term equal to 0 we will get tan inverse term tan term sorry tan automatically because we have a cosine value here and then we have a sine value here sine value divided by cosine value obviously will get a tan value which can be represented as pi we can take the base value as pi n as equal n as 1 so on substituting we will get tp is equal to pi divided by omega n into root of 1 minus theta square uh, in this case the t minimum value for undershoot condition is n is equal to 2 so we have to represent it as 2 pi then it will be the undershoot case is equal to 0 let us take this is equal to 0 so when we take this term as 0 obviously the denominator term will get multiplied with a 0 and we will get e power minus theta omega n into t s settling time is equal to 0 so in this case what we have to do is we have to remove the exponential term so while removing the exponential term we will take natural logarithm on the both the sides so while taking natural logarithm on both and substitute this is for uh, um, 2 percentage here and if it is for 5 percentage here then ts is equal to 3 into t that will be the calculation in this way we can calculate the settling time also and finally the steady state error steady state error is nothing but the difference between the set value as well as the reference value actual value and the reference value so this difference when time tends to infinity or when s term the laplace transform s term tends to zero we can calculate in this way steady state error can also mp is asked damping ratio undamped natural frequency and what is the percentage you overshoot it is asked for unit step input so we write the mp value substitution put theta value you'll get mp value in this way we can calculate the time domain specifications the characteristic equation to compare here omega n square is equal to 16 and the next one is 4 plus 16 so omega n square is equal to 16 so omega n is equal to 4 2 zeta omega n is equal to 4 plus 16k here we know zeta value as 0.8 omega n we have calculated it as 4 so simply you can find out the value for k after finding out the value for k we can find the mp value even without knowing the value for k we can find out the mp value because one the zeta value is to be substituted here so it will be easy to calculate mp value so it is 1 by t the second term is 1 by t and the third term is k by t 2 zeta omega n is equal to 1 by t and omega n square is equal to k by t so therefore omega n is root of k by t substitute this in this equation 2 zeta root of k by t is equal to 1 by t so here it is a root t this is t this will be getting cancelled you can multi cross multiply the root k you get theta is equal to 1 divided by 2 into root of k t given zeta 1 is equal to 0.3 and zeta 2 is equal to 0.2 you just substitute zeta 1 and zeta 2 you will get the value for a ratio of k to k1 so k1 is equal to 9 into k2 hence the gain k1 at which zeta is equal to 0.3 it should be multiplied by 1 by 9 to increase the damping ratio from 0.3 to 0.9 that's all this is how we have to calculate the gain value thank you